now we're going to stretch our wrists in a different way. So sit on your knees and take your, this is just to get used to this hand position. So you can sit in Vajrasana and then take your hands to the floor. Turn your arms so that your arms are going this way. And then press your shoulder blades away from your ears. Okay. All right, now come to all fours. And if you need a blanket under your knees, you can take one, okay? Now turn, take your uh, arms, revolve them from the top of the arm. So the hand is in this position. So there's a full arm balance in Adho Mukha Vrikshasana that we do like this, right? Okay, keep your shoulder blades pressed away from your ears. Now, shift your, can you draw your legs together, Alex? Ah, okay, everyone. Now, shift yourself forward like you just did in Chaturanga 2. And keep your shoulder blades away from your ears and the sides of your navel lifted. As you shift forward, is there less stress or more stress on your wrists? Less. less. Shift back. You feel there's more stretch, more stre stress, I'm using that word, but stretch on your wrists. On the, and then as you shift forward, there's less. Keep your shoulder blades moving away from your ears, right? There's less. But do you feel more activity in your abdomen for some of you? Yes. Good, good. And then shift back and sit down. So sometimes it happens automatically because we're, it's like a cantilever, an architecture. That, and it happens below the level of the conscious brain. As you moved yourself forward, those other muscles kicked in, or that part of your body started to kick in. And sometimes there, are, there is intelligence in the body. The body is uh, doing something helpful. Sometimes we're not aware of that because we're not spreading our intelligence over the body and catching those things that might actually be beneficial. So sometimes there are things that are less helpful, but sometimes there are things that are really helpful. So you shift forward and we're gonna just do that one one more time. This time, what I'm gonna ask you to do is consciously draw the skin and the muscle fibers, not only towards the posterior abdominal wall, but towards each other like you had a zipper that was going up from your pubic bone to your sternum so that there's this kind of movement towards the median line, not away, okay? So it's not that. Okay, that there's this uh, containment. Let's try that one more time. Okay, with our knees bent, turn your hands. And, okay, take your shoulders away from your ears because that is very challenging when our arms are rotated to this degree. Shoulder blades away from your ears. All right, now take your tailbone slightly towards your, the uh, heels, slightly towards the pubic bone, slightly towards the heels. Do you feel some activity in the sides of your lower mm -hmm. navel, abdominal wall. Okay, now start to come forward and draw the skin and the muscles of the sides of the abdominal wall towards the median line. Keep the posterior abdominal wall moving towards the spine and the shoulder blades away from the ears. Okay, now shift back and out you come. Okay, all right, so now you felt some work there, right? Okay, and it was, uh, movement that was directed towards stabilizing you. Okay, so that's uh, a dynamic movement towards stability. So now what we'll do is we're gonna do that same thing one last time, just once, and we will be doing it with our legs straight. <laughs> okay, so we'll go like this and come forward. So it's sort of like chaturanga, except your elbows aren't bent. So you're going to come forward and see if you can pause here. And the zipper now is, uh, it's like a, a, what I always imagine when I do this, if I, I have found helpful, is, uh, is like a wetsuit for a mermaid. So if a mermaid, <laughs> if a mermaid had a wetsuit, it would go zzz, all the way up from the feet, okay? So that, that's a total body, you know, spreading to, at the back body and the back of the inner thigh towards the outer thigh and this movement from the inner leg up into the abdominal wall, 
okay? And these sides of the waist moving in as well. And the whole time, yes, our shoulder blades are spreading as well. So the back body is spreading, but they're moving in to the back ribs and away from the head, and that's challenging, all right? So let's try that, okay? So you've got your uh, median line. You're centralizing your, literally centralizing your body, but you're also sent, well, this is a term that Gita Yengar uses, you're bringing your awareness towards the center line, towards the median line, centralizing the intelligence, okay? So straighten your legs after you've turned your arms, move your shoulder blades away from your ears, everyone, keep them spreading, that's quite challenging here. And then straighten your legs, keep them together. Ah, now you're gonna take your tailbone towards your pubic bone, Rosa, so you have more, you can walk your feet back a little bit if you need to. Think chaturanga. So I say that because your buttocks was sticking up like Paripurnavasana, that's all. So go to your, your uh, extended leg position. Think chaturanga from your shoulders to your heels. Okay, now roll forward towards the tips of your toes. Go, yes, and pause there. Move your shoulder blades away from your ears. Try not to drop the pelvis. It's not upward dog. It's not upward dog. That's it. And then pull back. And notice what happened to your tailbone when you pulled back, Rosa. Do you feel that? Okay, now bend your knees and come down. Just so you know, it's about, I don't want you to, it's not about tucking under, it's not that. It's just that in Chaturanga, for some people, there's a tendency to really lift the pelvis up, which puts a lot of pressure on the shoulder joints. So we're just attempting to have the Danda. And you were attempting to have it there because now we're gonna do Mayarasana, so you're all gonna get a belt, okay? So we're gonna take a ball, oh, yeah. <laughs> So we'll try one belt and then we'll see, we'll see what happens, okay. This actually is an interesting tool to use for chaturanga, right? You know that for people that have problems, uh, which we didn't do today, but you could use your belt for chaturanga because it provides the support for the front body that would be collapsing down towards the floor and it helps the elbows stay in. You were all doing a good job with that, but that's one of the reasons why we're using it here, because this pose doesn't have your legs on the floor. So, uh, which means that this, uh, in, this uh, integration of the limbs into the uh, core or the median line, the central, the center of the body has to be uh, pratishtayam, well established. Okay, so again, uh, mobility, the inspiration to proceed, so here we go, and stability, the adhesiveness to establish oneself. So I'm gonna roll up my sleeves. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so the belt, so eventually in this pose, your elbows will be close together, but we're gonna let our elbows be uh, a bit apart, so we'll decentralize slightly. It's a very centralized pose will be decentralizing slightly so that we have, it's more accessible. And see if you can uh, notice, all right, the poses that we did earlier. Do you see a Paripurna Navasana here? Okay. An Arda Navasana coming in. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, but most things worth worth pers worth uh, pursuing are not easy in the beginning. Okay, I'll go back to the Bhagavad Gita. What was poison in the beginning is elixir in the end. Okay, and that was my experience with this pose. I had a very hard time with it, and and I took it on because I thought there must be something in this for me. You know, because it's hard actually. There's an opportunity in the difficulty. It was, it was, it was, there was a teaching there. So again, yoga, it does, the inspiration to proceed. We, it sort of fortifies, oh, this is challenging, and that gets interesting. So um, what I learned okay, <laughs> was that I was not getting my arms in a place where they needed to be to hold me. My elbows were over my ribs, and I convinced I have short arms, I have wide shoulders. There were all these reasons why, okay? But uh, what, what I wasn't uh, learning was, or asking myself the question, I was like, I can't do it because. 
So that needed to be rephrased to uh, not can I do it or can't I do it, but how can I do this? How can I do this? How can I get my arms to be at my navel area where they need to be to hold me up because that's close to the center of gravity if they're not there when I bend my arms, okay? So that's where the uh, integration of poses from previous syllabi, so this is a more advanced pose in the anger system, they're, they're there to provide us with the tools like you're building a car engine or something, you have these things where you're like, oh, I gotta, I gotta take this apart and put it back together and figure out like what, you know, what makes this tick, okay? So what I learned is if, it, if I went before and I, my, my previous attempts, the elbows were here and then my, my legs just felt so heavy, like a, oh, just felt so heavy. So was to take the position, take the, this uh, entryway where, so here's where I might start. Do you see how my elbows are over my ribs? Okay. So if I walk in, do you see if you drew a line between my elbows and my navel or my pelvis, they're closer together now, aren't they? And so it's like, oh, that's Paripur Navasana. Now, when I start to take my legs back, I'm going to take the tailbone towards the pubic bone and bring my navel band forward into that belt. Do you see? And then I walk my legs back. So now I've got the sides of my elbows right into the sides of the abdominal wall. And then it's a matter of not staying here and picking a leg up, but shifting just enough, like Chaturanga 2, for the legs to begin to lift. OK? Like Chaturanga 2, right? Shall we give it a go? OK. So we'll try a few attempts because the first you know, it's actually the approach that's very interesting. It's the process of moving into the pose where there's a lot of opportunity to integrate. And, and you might balance and you might not. Uh, if you have uh, any fear about doing this, you can take one of those blankets and put it on the floor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, yes. We're attempting to have, and I don't know if I did or not, but attempting to be level with the floor. Yes. Okay, was it? Okay, I know in some uh, styles the legs go way up. Uh, in Iyengar yoga, that we're, we're looking for that, like basically like a chaturanga type alignment because the legs go up for us in Pinchamayarasana, the tail feather of the peacock. You know when you see peacocks walking around, sometimes their tail is down there, it's like this, and it goes up a little bit, and then sometimes it goes like that, okay? So this is when the long peacock tail is about like that, you know, along the floor, not going way up. Okay, so let's uh, attempt to so put your, so the, this also, the elbows into the sides of the abdominal wall can also in reverse teach you about what area you're working or, in, or attempting to connect to, like pillars of the abdomen, when you're doing Urdhva Prasarita Padasana and Paripurna Navasana and Ardha Navasana. Your elbows are going to give you a direct perception of that. So let's try. So take your hands. Uh, uh, down and I put my head down on the floor. It made it easier for me to turn my hands. So put your head down, turn your palms around. It could be a little bit narrower, Rosa, and then you can experiment with that. Okay. Take your head down. My boobs are not. The, it, me yes. So sometimes you have to do this <laughs> scooping action <laughs> of one arm and then the other. Yes. Okay. So now take your uh, head down, revolve your arms, that's it. And then stretch your legs. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, so now be in a paripurna, let your ribs come up off the belt, extend your legs, lift your buttocks up, think paripurna navasana, Alex. Yes, <laughs> bring your feet together, good. So now if you drew a line from your navel, or it's even from your hips, everyone, your hips are over your belt. So now start to walk your feet back a little bit, but take your tailbone, towards your pubic bone, lift the sides of the navel so what you're aiming to do as you walk your feet back, Orly, walk your feet back, walk your feet back, and bring your navel, aim to get your navel over your belt. So you'll have to walk your feet back a bit in order to do that. Once you have the navel over the belt, straighten those legs, join them, that's it, lift your head, at least there's that much, lift your head, good, it's like Chaturanga Dandasana, sort of, and then shift Forward towards the tips of your toes and 
firm the back thighs to raise them, engage them. Yes, that's the idea. There you go, Rosa. Here we are, okay. Tailbone towards the floor. Yes, collarbones forward. Yes, and then down you come, okay, good. All right, so rest, rest there, because that was a long, long time for some of you. Poses like this are like chaturanga, the navasanas, yeah, it's a little strong there, I know. They're what Gita calls touch and go poses. So when you're first learning them, it's touch and go. You don't have to hold them as long, okay? Uh, so good job, good job, okay? So um, it's uh, interesting how um, the back works in this asana. It's sort of, it looks like it would be a shalabhasana. So in a sense, it's shalabhasana for your back body to some degree. Okay, it's not arched, but the back body has to engage because the legs were, you were in this uh, boat pose shape, and so the hamstrings are elongating, the buttocks are, uh, buttock sitting bones are lifting. And then as I come here, and I want to aim the sides of the navel to come to the belt, and I take my head up, now I'm going to have to engage around the backs of the thighs and the tailbone in order for the legs to come up. Do you understand, guys? Because otherwise they would stay down and feel heavy. But my shoulder blades are not doing this action like they would be in Shalabhasana. They're really spreading quite a bit because the arms, it's more like Garudasana in a certain sense. So it's, it's what well, this is the beauty of the pose is because you have to keep this integrity in the lumbar spine. You can't just push that forward and get your legs up by arching your lumbar spine. The lumbar spine remains stable and then the legs have to lift and the shoulders have to lift without going here. Okay, they try to lift away from them, they're still spreading, and that makes it very interesting and actually can be quite healing because it's uh, not an extreme range of motion position. Okay, this isn't for the extremely flexible, but it's requiring a certain degree of a balance, as Gita says, of stability and mobility. It's like this beautiful chemistry of those two. Okay, and we're working very close to the bone, very close to the median line in a small range of motion and attempting to have that danda, like you're like just hovering over the floor like that, just on the forearms, okay? And the forearms, if you notice, were slanting a little bit forward. Did you notice that? Like, so that it's less stressful on your wrist when you're able to take those collarbones forward. Let's try two more times. And <laughs> yes, and then we have our last pose, which will stretch it all out. Yes, 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 because that's this wonderful principle, centralizing and decentralizing. So we know sometimes it's just good to take our arms further apart, legs further apart, right? If we do a forward bend and your hamstrings are stiff, you take your legs further apart, you have possibility. So, we'll, so go back to these principles because they're really there. Something feels impossible, give your limbs a little more room and then you'll be able to gradually bring them in. Okay, so stra strap up. Take your head down. We could also use a, a sticky mat in the abdomen and no belt. There's a, there are a lot of different wonderful ways to approach the pose. Okay, so lift your legs. That's it. So be in that Paripurna shape. Just so that we can, because notice how your arms are like Paripurna Navasana, aren't they? Except they're bent. Okay. Now, your pips are right over your elbows. So we know that there's this relationship that we're just gonna gradually stretch it out. So we'll start to walk your feet back. And as you walk your feet back, draw the buttock flesh towards your heels, lift the sides of your abdominal wall until you aim to get the navel band right on that belt. And as soon as the navel band comes to the belt, raise your head. That's it. And then join those legs, Rosa, and make them very dynamic as you start to shift your uh, wait for, that's it, Orly, as you start to shift your collarbones forward and then engage those legs, engage around your tailbone. That's lifting one leg. I want you to shift forward, Rosa, and lift. Firm around your back thighs and buttocks. Engage there. Okay, Orly, stay there. Take your legs down. Okay, Orly, stay there. Good, come down and rest. Okay, now draw your collarbones forward. Yes, forward. That's the idea. That's the idea. That's it, now take your tailbone towards the floor, collarbones forward, yes. 
and then down you go. Okay, so what could we do to make that even easier is, is <laughs> you could have your feet on a block, oh, okay. right? Yep. Then they would be up a bit. You could have them at the wall. You could close the kinetic chain by having your feet at the wall and then press them into the wall, like we've often learned Chaturanga Dandasana. Mm -hmm. Okay, when the legs aren't working in Chaturanga Dandasana, sometimes we say to students, go to the wall, press your feet back into the wall. Same thing is true here would be your toes. You know, you could put your toes on the wall or even your heels. But it's the, the legs have to work as much as they do in Chaturanga 2 because the toes are down, as much as they do in Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, but they're off the floor. So in a certain sense, they have to be even more intelligized because they're not connected to the earth. They have to stabilize you in space which makes it such a powerful pose because you're literally, uh, not only are you stabled and supported in the midsection, but it's the oppositional force like warrior three that is what's stabilizing you in space. Shall we try it the last time? Okay, this is the last time you're gonna go to the wall. Uh, okay. I was about to ask you, can I use blocks or a wall? Yes, okay. okay. So you're gonna go into the wall. The rest of you have one more attempt. Now, you can go to the wall too, Rosa, okay? Like yeah, yeah, it, that's, Right, you could say that again. That's just the common language. Go ahead. Do you want to say that? Or do you feel like we don't want to say that? I like how you phrased that. <laughs> no, I mean, I need something to touch my legs. So yes, and it. your buttocks, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's no, that, because that happens in Chaturanga. That, for you, uh -huh. the, the, pat, the thing that's so interesting is some of these patterns just, where, the, where we go off in those earlier poses, it just keeps replicating itself and, and amp becoming amplified in these other contexts. So you two in the center, you're uh, going to attempt to bring a little more, because it's really challenging, it's like doing Garudasana and trying to spread your collarbones, which is a good action, helpful action. So you're going to attempt to spread your collarbones in what feels like an impossible situation to, in which to spread them. Okay, and move them forward as your legs move back. And now ladies, you're gonna come in close to the wall, okay? So when you walk your, well, you don't have to start really close to the wall, but when you walk your feet back, they'll be on the wall, okay? So take your head down and, uh-huh. So you're gonna put your belt on, take your head down. You're gonna go from the Pariporna shape and then walk the feet back and organize yourself on the way because we need the navel band over the belt. That's a good uh, distance there, Rosa. That's a good distance. There you go. And then, t yes, Rosa. Good. Orly, walk your feet back. Raise your head up. We're going to use your toes on the wall because of your distance. That's it, Rosa. Take your head up now, Orly. Take your head. Yes. Okay, now put the toe of one foot on the wall and then the other. Good. Press those feet into the wall. Excellent. And there you are. Four peacocks. Oh, I love it. Okay. <laughs> and then exhale and down you come. Good. Good for you. Okay, that's over. The back works in this asana. It's sort of, it looks like it would be a shalabhasana. So in a sense, it's shalabhasana for your back body to some degree. Okay, it's not arched, but the back body has to engage because the legs were, you were in this uh, boat pose shape, and so the hamstrings are elongating, the buttocks are, uh, buttocks, sitting bones are lifting. And then as I come here, and I want to aim the sides of the navel to come to the belt, and I take my head up, now I'm going to have to engage around the backs of the thighs and the tailbone in order for the legs to come up.